All right, everybody, let's keep this review train going with another set of cards. Here we have Beta Ray Bill. We know of two of the Beta Ray Bills. We don't know the rare version yet, but we do know the common and uncommon version. Both of them are six cost shield characters with the Guardian affiliation, a 1, 4, 6, 1, 5, 7, and 2, 7, 8 stat line. For a six cost character in the game of Dice Masters, this stat line is slightly above average with the top side being somewhere around 14 stats. So 15 stats is just barely above that mark. The other two sides are above average as well, so all around you're getting good stats for this six cost. As for character abilities, the common version says Beta Ray Bill cannot be blocked by sidekicks or by shield character dice. This harkens back to some of the old school cards that said similar things can't be blocked by this type of energy character dice. And those were never too, too strong, so I don't really see this one being strong as well. In the fringe case that you're up against some sort of a mono shield team or a lot of allies or sidekicks, kicks this card's okay other than that you're just looking at the stat line saying that's pretty nice and then seeing that he won't be blocked by a sidekick making it a little harder for your opponent to deal with him all in all though it's not the greatest card it's not going to end the world and it's not the worst card so it's decently playable you probably won't see this card around very much especially at the sixth cost it doesn't do enough when it hits the board to really change the board state it's just a simple play around i can't block it with this or that so you probably won't see this card very much the uncommon version is a little bit more interesting in that it says Beta Ray Bill only takes one damage from each source. This means that unless your opponent has some sort of auto KO or text wiping or just lets you hit them with Beta Ray Bill, he's really not going to leave the field because it is almost impossible to come up with an average of seven sources of damage to be able to take out Beta Ray Bill. For six, he is sticking to the board and really not leaving it, again, unless they're wiping the card text of this Beta Ray Bill, or they're somehow dealing seven points of damage on average to KO him from different sources. It's really, really cool that uh, you can't really remove him through those conventional means and really only have to remove him by wiping his card text or by auto-KOing him somehow. Now, you could also remove this with Deadly, and you could also remove this with the Uncommon Adam Warlock and things that have that same sort of uh, ability. So it's it's not impossible to work around this card, but if you're not bringing the tools that you need to take care of it, then it really does stick to the board and just deal you damage whenever really they choose, or just kill all of your things by attacking every turn until you let it through, and then it cycles and comes back out again. So it's really cool. Um, for six, it probably doesn't do enough, but the fact that it can stick out there makes it worth giving a shot or at least playing with a little bit. I think it's really fun, even though it probably won't make competitive teams very often or at all. In draft, it's six so it's hard to get to, so that makes it a little unwieldy. If you can get to it, though, you're probably not running into any opposition that can remove it outside of someone bringing truce or picking up that Adam Warlock that I mentioned before. So it can deal some pretty reliable damage if you do get it in draft and somehow are able to pay for it. On to Black Widow. We've got two of Black Widow's card rarities. We don't know the rare as well for this one, but we do know the common and uncommon. Black Widow is a three-cost fist character with the Avengers affiliation. She's got the 0310321331 stat line. And her common version has Call Out, which is a great ability, as I've already talked about. I really like it. It takes away some choices from your opponent, making them play into your hands a little bit more. So is this common version good? Well, we have Call Out on a cheap character, a three-cost character. She's under statted for a three cost with that top side being a three three meaning anything that she calls out to her she's probably not KOing that takes away a little bit of the versatility from call out itself I think she'll be worth picking up in draft but I don't think she's worth it in constructed where that three cost stat line and the call out ability doesn't really do enough to get her a spot onto an eight card team worth mentioning is the Avengers affiliation where that could be some sort of a build around but I don't think there's a ton of push to really build around an Avengers team in a competitive sense of things depending on what you're running though if you're running in a lot of theme tournaments then sure she could fit in that but if you're trying to play modern tournament level play then she's probably just not making the cut which is a fair bit better for her stat line because at this point her stat line doesn't really matter all she needs to do is engage with something this makes her a good blocker more than a good attacker but she can still be used to attack because you're threatening whatever they block with to be KO'd that turn 
This, however, does not push this card over the edge into super playable. I think it's, again, pretty good in draft. Just like the callout version, you can do things with this in draft that you wouldn't really have the space for in constructed because you're kind of beholden into putting these eight cards that are way more powerful onto your team rather than her. So I don't really see her being used in constructed as much as I do seeing her being picked up in draft. Now, WizKids, here's a crazy thought. Let's take both of these abilities, Call Out and Deadly, and smush them onto one really cheap card so we have like this really cool cheap removal spell. In fact, then let's make it the rare version of this card and release it with this set. Do it. I dare you. That would be so cool. Next up, we have another card we've seen way too much of. In fact, I think we've seen it like 16 times at this point. Captain America. So the common version of Captain America is a four-cost shield character with the Avengers affiliation, a 1, 2, 4, 2, 4, 5, and 2, 5, 5 stat line. He's got Intimidate, but his next part of his text says Captain America may only use Intimidate on villain character dice. As a refresher, Intimidate says when fielded, remove target character die from the field zone until the end of the turn. Place it next to your character cards during that turn as a reminder. So with this four-cost 5-5, five, five, you also get the ability to grab one of your opponent's villain dice. So what are you looking to grab? What's a high priority target? Well, Shriek is a high priority target for one. You could also grab Super Rare Darkseid, even though his ability only really works on his turn, so grabbing him out of the field just means you pull another blocker away. Maybe a new Cheetah, Foot Ninja, Huntress, Firefly, that really powerful blocking Killer Frost from the Green Arrow and the Flash set, the rare Scarecrow, if that's still getting run by somebody, uh, the promo Scarecrow, because that one's pretty good. Baron Zemo, if they're running that cool Baron Zemo, unblockable team. The villain side of the flip characters like Batwoman and Batman. Those are some of the villains that jump out to me as being powerful and good to remove from the field for that turn. Meaning that this does have some merit in Constructed. It may be not the most powerful card in the world in Constructed, but I could see it being put on something just to pull something out of the field for a turn, or even just the sense that you're going to hit it most of the time. You're going to hit something with this most of the time, so why not run it, right? There's enough villains out there in the meta that you can consistently land this on something. As for draft, in this set we have a grand total of six characters that have been revealed to be villains, so this probably doesn't hit very many things in draft. So then you're just looking at its stat value, and it has a decent stat line for a four cost. That bottom side kind of hurts it a little bit, but overall not too bad. So you could pick it up in draft just for the stats, but you probably won't expect it to hit any anything except like Norman Osborn or the Spot or Madam Mask. The other three are expensive characters, so you're probably not running into those. So overall, you're not seeing this actually use its ability, and you're just going to play this for its stat line. Probably not very good in draft. The Uncommon Captain America is a five-cost shield character with the same affiliation, and his ability says at the end of your attack step, if Captain America was blocked but not KO'd, he deals his damage equal to his attack, to target opponent. This ability is similar to Two-Face Double Deal, but it's actually kind of worse because Two-Face Double Deal triggered the moment it was blocked and you could use that ability. This one triggers if it's blocked but not KO'd. So your opponent has slightly more opportunity to avoid the damage itself. Uh, it still is a pretty good ability because it still forces your opponent to either say, well, I might as well let them through or block with something that kills it. And if they don't have something that can kill it, then it's gonna they're gonna take that damage anyway so that they basically just can't block it from the get-go, but there are opportunities for this one to be blocked, whereas Two-Face Double Deal didn't have as many ways to be dealt with. This card is pretty good in draft because if you can attack with this on its 5-5 five five side, it's hard to deal with a 5-5 five five character in draft. Therefore, if that your opponent blocks with something that can't deal with it, then you're dealing that damage. Direct damage in draft is strong, and so this is worth picking up. In Constructed, this sees no play because we already have Two-Face Double Deal, and Two-Face Double Deal is better than this card in every respect. Let's end this episode with another super rare. This is Captain Britain Iron Man. This is one of those what-if super rares. And if you notice in his top right, he's a four-cost character that costs one of each energy type. And his text says that you have to use each of those energy types and you cannot use question marks in order to purchase him. That can't be wiped, that can't be ignored, so you have to find each of those energy types when purchasing him. His stat line is an 0422253373. And his other text on his card reads... 
while Captain Britain Iron Man is active, whenever you field a character die or use a basic action die, you may purchase a copy of that die for up to three less to a minimum of one. This to me is a remarkably playable and very exciting super rare. And I say remarkably playable because all the other what if super rares from other sets have really been interesting but not exactly playable. It's just too hard to get to a six cost and have all of those energy types unless you're fixing it. And when you do get to it, some of them had good abilities some of them had dud abilities, and so very few of them saw play. This, however, is a completely different story because it is a 4-cost character and not a 6 or 7-cost character, and it does something that you can build around. It discounts things, and it gives you value. Now, it doesn't discount everything. You actually have to play that the turn that you want to purchase it, and he has to be out on the field when you do play that card or play that die or field that character. Uh, but the fact that it discounts that thing for 3 means that you can play something that's 5 cost and then just purchase two of them for two which is really really strong and I think this does see some play in constructed because of that insane discount as for what specifically this goes on I don't know you could put it on a lot of stuff like maybe a Jimmy Olsen Superman team where you're getting one of those iron will over crush Superman for really really cheap all of a sudden because of both Jimmy Olsen and because of the Captain Britain Iron Man that you have out at the same time there are a whole lot of cool combos that could go with this card so leave me a comment below and tell me what you'd like to pair with this card, what you would like to discount. So there we go, another four characters down. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these cards. Tell me which ones you like the most. Tell me which ones you like the least. Tell me about this super rare. Do you like this? Are you going to want this from your box? Or are you going to want some of the other super rares that we will talk about or we have talked about? As always, everybody, thank you for watching.